Okay, so today I want to discuss um, the. Uh, I'm not starting out very well here, am I? Um, Twitch. Yeah, this is what I want. Stream manager on live. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So today I want to discuss uh, MLB 21, the show, and the spreadsheets I created. Um, I did those uh, basically because um, I got tired of wondering where I was at in progress with uh, whatever mode I was playing in, whether it was player programs, whether it was um, the monthly awards, evolutions, or just trying to get through the inning itself. So I created a number of spreadsheets and I'll show you um, a couple of them here and how they work. And if you have questions, you can contact me and, and uh, I can uh, even let you try them out if you want. Um, I've just done it for fun, it's for me, this is nothing professional, uh, but uh, I, f I found them very helpful. So let's get into my the base one that I use. And this is called uh, Lineup and Depth Chart. That's the name of this spreadsheet. And I'm gonna start it up here in a second. And what it does is it takes a look at my um, lineup, or there we go, how do I, there we go. It takes a look at my inventory that I have, and I can create a depth chart and a lineup from the inventory that I have. Um, and I will show this to you here this is it right here okay so let's start with the base this is the database and this database comes from MLB the show it's part of the API download let me show you that right real quick so the API if you see it over here this is the the different parts of of data that's available from MLB um, the show that they give you uh, and all you have to do is download it um, I have to give credit and props to my son Jedi, Jedi Master Watt he wrote a script to handle uh, the download and I'll show you how this works because it's actually pretty um, pretty ingenious so first off, what you need to know is how many pages of data there are uh, in the API. Now, MLB 21, the show, has 25 items per page. And as you can see here, there's 125 pages. And this isn't just what I own, but this is everything. And that's what you want. You want everything. So you want to look at uh, 125 pages. So let me open up um, the script that he's done here, and we'll go to PowerShell. Okay, so there's there's the PowerShell. Now um, I've downloaded this API already. It hasn't changed uh, since the last time I. I downloaded it, and that's because I did it after the 11th inning started when pretty much everything, um, all new cards had stopped coming out and such. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this API script. I think I just set it to run and I didn't want to do that um, first of all there's a a folder and I just call it um, I'll just show it to you right here it's called J I just call it JSON 7 and this is what holds all the all the data for the API download and I'm gonna delete everything here and let me move this out of the way um, and let me 
close the PowerShell because I don't want it to be doing what it's doing here. Um, okay, let's open up a new PowerShell. All right, so now I want to change um, the download to my JSON 7 folder. You can call it anything. It doesn't have to be JSON 7, but that's what I call it just because it's easy. So um, the, my JSON 7 folder is uh, under PC desktop, desktop, JSON, Seven. Hopefully, I typed the the path right. I did not. C users PC desktop desktop it'd help if I told it what I wanted it to do. Okay, so now you can see that um, I'm in the JSON 7 folder. And if I do a directory of that folder, it's going to show that it's empty. There's nothing there because I deleted everything in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the script uh, that my son wrote. And you can see right in here, let's, let's open this up a little bit more so you can see the whole script. Um, Right here, there's a hundred. It says 125 pages. Right here, 125. That's the number of pages. So when 22 comes up, or even if you want to do it now, you can put in. A, you can uh, put 125. But uh, when the new year comes, um, this number will be small, and it will gradually change as uh, SDS releases more cards. So right now it's 125. So now I'm going to enter this command and it's going to start running. And you can see this, you can see it running as it fills up each page. Now each of these is 25 items of data. And this is going to take a few minutes. So while it's filling this up, let me move it out of the way and reduce this. Uh, let me talk about the spreadsheet some more. So that this is that's the database. That's what we're capturing right now is the database. And you can see here the UIG is the unique identifier that SDS applies um, to each card. Now, I didn't really like the UIG that they provided because for me it's... Um, I don't know where the card exists or what it is. Um, actually, this is my UIG. This is my UIG here. I'll show you their UIG. So what I did is I created my own UIG. And so what it does is it gets the overall, which is the number of the card, 99, 98, 97, whatever. The first three letters of the first name, the first three letters of the last name, the position they played, the card series abbreviation, and the team. And these are the card series abbreviations that I use uh, for that. So that's the database and you can see the UIG. And what, what the importance of it, that's the key that keeps everything individual. Each card will have its own UIG so that when I'm pulling data for a certain player, uh, I'm, cert I'm sure that I'm pulling it for the right card that I want to use. So that's the database. And you can see in the database, SDS provides you with uh, a number of fields. Now, this is not all the fields they provide. And you'll see as I cut it down, I take out fields that, that we don't need. Um, but that's the database in and of itself. And so then we get to inventory. Now, the inventory can be as much or as little of, the, of your inventory that you like. Now, I haven't done my inventory in a while, so what I'm going to do is I have a worksheet for my inventory. And I 
and this is the this is the data here right here so I'm gonna take this And I'm going to delete it. Okay, so now you can see the right side um, delete uh, blanked out to no data, which is fine because it's just taking values from here. Now, uh, column K, you'll see, has an error, a value error. And the reason it does that is because in this column, I, I change the, the overall from a text value, which is what SDS gives you, to a number value, which makes it easier to work with when I'm sorting out cards and such. So let's get to uh, doing this. So I'm going to, let's see, I should, let's see here. So the first thing I do is I take the first page. But what? let me do this first. I'm going to change this to just the cards I own. And I'm going to do just my diamonds. I'm not going to do any more than just the diamonds because otherwise I'm looking at copying 117 pages of data. Now in the beginning that's fine because you know you don't have as many you don't have that many cards. But right now I have more cards than what I want. So I'm going to copy this. Let me bring this back over. And I, I put my cursor here because you have the image that we're starting out with. And I don't want to copy the image. So I'm going to match the destination format, hit paste. And you can see that it lines up perfectly. So now I'm going to put my cursor down here. Now I'm not going to show you. Let's see. What, I'll show you. I can only show you one thing at a time. So. Let me move uh, my inventory out and move this in because this is what we're working with here. And you'll see uh, it automatically changes the, the overall from a value or from a, from a text to a numerical value. And then it brings that numerical value over into N through T. And that, those are, this is what I'm going to use to copy into my inventory tab. So, um, let me go to the second page. And I'll just do this as quickly as I can. probably should have done this ahead of time and just did like the last page but you, you probably want to get a pretty good idea of um, how the whole process works and uh, since nobody's watching this live that means if you do watch it you'll do it recorded you could always fast forward through this section if you want to. But I don't want to I don't want to water this down and make it seem that it's quicker than it's not or that it's easier or that it comes automatically or you definitely have to put the work into it to get this data. But what you get out of it for me is um, very well worth it. I have a ways to go here, don't I? I'm only on 98s. Now you could do your whole 
inventory if you wanted to all the way down to the commons it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how many there are um, all that matters is that you capture the data that you want to work with And even though I don't even, I don't use all of my diamonds, I probably don't go below 96 most of the time. Um, I want to complete a, a pretty good depth chart. And the only time I don't use diamonds in a team is when I'm doing the daily missions for the inning when you have to use like twins hitters or twins players or whatever and you have to in order to fill the team to do the number of innings you need you have to go sometimes into even commons because you don't have uh, enough cards for the current team that's out or whatever or the current team has more commons than, than they have diamonds or golds or whatever 96s, we're getting there. Meanwhile, that script has been working, and it's I'm sure it's done by now. It doesn't take that long for uh, the API to download. And I'll show you uh, what the files look like um, when it's done, when, after I finish this inventory. we're getting there so even though it does take work to do this it doesn't take a lot of time I mean it just, and it all depends on your database and it all depends on or it all depends on your inventory and how how much of your inventory you want to set into your depth chart into this database what you want to do with it so you know, you get out of it what you put into it. Now, if there was a way to download the in your inventory, well, that would be awesome. That would just make it really super quick. But uh, I think the 
the fact that SDS releases their I just got an error throttle limit reached please try again later what in the world did I just do let me get back in think they weren't happy with me taking all the data I was taking so I got to 88 <laughs> all right we'll set this aside for now and uh, let me go I'll bring in the database so here's the API and you can see there's 125 pages here and what uh, my son did is he created a converter you know, in that script so it takes all these JSON files and converts it into a CSV file which can be opened in spreadsheet in a spreadsheet so let's set this aside since I can't download right now because uh, SDS wasn't happy with how many pages I was copying apparently so here you can see let me Let me auto with everything here so we can see what we have. Okay, so here's their unique identifier here in column A. I don't need that, so I'll highlight it. And MLB cards, I'm not taking anything else out of their database besides MLB cards. I'm not taking uniforms or bats or any of the other stuff that they have in their database. All I want are the MLB cards, and that's the only thing I've downloaded. So I don't need that column. I don't need any images and that's the card images that you see here let's we'll begin we'll just delete those columns we don't need them okay so we have the name which we need what type of card it is the team that the player is on for this card and the team name that's short we want to keep that the overall we want that. The series, we want that. Series texture name, we don't need a texture name. Doesn't do us any good. The year the card's released, we don't need. So we're going to delete that. Uh, the position the, the player is at, the secondary, we don't need the jersey number, the age, so we're going to delete those. The Which way they bat, which way they throw, yes. Their height, weight, where they're born, we don't need. Um, are they a hitter? Yes or no? We're going to keep that. And then you have all their stats right here. And we definitely want to keep all of that information here. Okay, and then we get into images. This is where they keep, this is where they store their images in their server. And we don't need the images, so we're going to delete that. We don't need the fill rank image. That's going to be a diamond, a gold, or whatever shield it is. And it shows and we're going to delete that. Uh, these two, the pitches and the quirks, uh, we don't need, and we weren't able to capture those appropriately anyway, but we don't need them, because that's the type of pitches the pitcher has and any quirks that they have, and we're not going to use that. So maybe if we were creating a database instead of a spreadsheet, um, that might be uh, useful, but we're not going to do that. And is sellable? We're going to keep that. I don't use that field that much, but we're going to keep it anyway. Okay, so now we have um, the fields that we want with all the cards. And you can see there's 3,109 lines, so there's 3,108 or seven uh, cards here. So let me move this over out of the way. And we're going to go here to the database field. So, um, column A, my UIG is their unique identifier. This is a, this is a formula that will read everything else. So we're not going to bother with. Uh, we're not going to delete that or go over it. So, but what we do have is 
all these other columns that we kept, and you can see this all the way to is, is sellable. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight, and I'll show you that so you can see it. We're going to highlight that starting with the name, and we're going to come down to the bottom of the database, and we're going to slide to the right. To the, so we're going to highlight this whole thing, this whole section right here. We have everything that we want to copy. So we're going to right click and hit copy. Let me move this out of the way now. And then we're going to start here. Remember, this is A2. So we're going to go to B, B2, which is the first name. And we're going to right click and we're going to paste it. And we're going to use numer numbers to paste it, values and it's pasted. Now let's go down to the bottom, make sure, see there's a few cards here that have been added. Even though it's the same number of pages, there's a few cards that have been added. So I'm gonna copy and paste this formula down. And there we go. So this is my database and it is all the, all the cards that they have. Now as far as the CSV goes, I'm done with it. I don't need it anymore. So now I'm just going to close it. I don't need to save uh, everything I've done. I can keep it original. You can save it if you want, but there's no reason because you're not going to use it again. All right. So um, now that now the database is is updated, let's go back to. And let's see if I can get into the inventory page again. There we go. It's let me back in. Woohoo! See, there it is. Owned. All right, so um, we left off with, let's get back to inventory. Let's get down to where we were. Well, not inventory, the inventory work tab. We got down to Willie Dames, Adams and Ames, uh, 88 from the 42. So we're going to go to that page, which is page 24. We're already on it. So now we're going to go to page 25. And we're almost there. It's pretty funny that it, they cut me off. I've never had, had that happen before, where they've cut me off. Oh, something happened. Let me undo that and look at what... Okay, I didn't grab the picture column in the copy. And that's what happened. So I want to make sure I do that. Okay. Page 26. And we're in the 87s. We're getting close. 86s. into the 85s. Hey, hey. Okay, very good. We're just going to grab the last of the 85s. I don't know how many pages of 85s there are. Let's see. That's it right here. So we got to page uh, 29. And about halfway down 29 is where the 85s stopped. Okay, so that's all my diamonds I have. And you can see from the last time I did this to now, um, I have a few more cards than I did before. So I'm going to copy and paste these formulas down, control C, control V, and um, that's it for my inventory. Now, I have a 
all these cards and I'm going to go and copy and let's go to the inventory page here now um, I was just noticing that I have on the worksheet here some things that came up as zeros. Hold on a second here. So the live cards don't have anything. Let's look in the inventory and see what I've done here. Okay, so I've just left the zeros in there. Okay, very good. Just want to make sure I, I didn't forget something. Okay, so we're, we have this ready to copy. We're going to go to the inventory. We're going to go to the top with Eddie Murray. Again, we're going to start with the name, not the unique identifier, because we don't have the unique identifier here. And this is a formula, and it will grab the unique formula. So I'm going to... Just go ahead and paste values, and it's going to go down. And I have, is Jake Chrono with the last one in there? It is. Let's go make sure, because this is telling me that it's a duplicate. So let's do a search for Nolan. And there we go. So I have this card in here twice. I added it by hand because I recently bought this card. So I'm going to delete this out. Now, if you saw some pink earlier, you weren't mistaken. And it's right up here. There's two cards that the last names are really super similar. Oh, look at this, a value for Alex Reyes. Um, Let's take a look at Alex Reyes. He's a 96. D302. Why is it D? It should be C. So let's go back to the inventory and take a look. So this should be a 96. He's an all-star. Okay, so for some reason, the formula for that one was off. I'm going to keep going off. I'm glad I looked at it. Okay, and... That's it. No more duplicates, no more problems. Everything looks good. All right, so that's the inventory. And then that's the database. So we've solved those two things. Now, um, the other thing I want to show you about this spreadsheet is PXP. Now, when I'm playing the game and uh, I parallel player, I will put their name in here, and you've probably seen Nolan Ryan's up. Well, I already. So you have Nolan Ryan and Kyle Tucker that I have recently, Kyle Tucker I just did yesterday, I got him to one. And you can see Nolan Ryan, he's already up to a three, but I haven't uh, alphabetized it since then. 
So let me go and I will show you how I alphabetize. alphabetize I might have to take a look at that too. Alphabetize um, this list. So let's go to data, sort, and I go by OVR. You can do anything you want. It really doesn't matter. I go by OVR, largest to smallest, player, A to Z, and then the PXD P level, or the parallel level, largest to smallest. I'm going to say OK. All right, now that's going to take those two cards at the bottom, and it mixed them in. So now all my 99s are together up here. And let's find this one card, Andrew Miller. Oh, because I don't own Andrew Miller anymore. I sold that card. Uh, even though I got him to a PXP1, I sold it. So I'm going to take... this data and I'm going to cut and paste it, shift it up one. Oh, let's not cut and paste, let's copy. Oh, let's go back. When I cut it, it, it uh, changed the formula. So let's, let's paste it. Okay, so that's uh, why this I took Roberto Clemente off because he's now in my place. All right, so so there's my inventory and everything looks good. So um, anyway, as I parallel players, I uh, just add their name to the list. I copy and paste the unique identifier control C control V and it says value but as I add the data in this will you know, see as I as I enter this it, it fills um, let's go ahead and take this back out I don't want to duplicate one and this the last column uh, where it says yes what is what that's telling me is that this is a match to uh, what I have in the database already. So, for example, if I were to put line bleeder 99 uh, veteran twins first base and put it at a 1, okay, you can see that I created a unique identifier for this. And um, but what's going to happen now, control C, copy, control V, paste, and it's going to say not available. Because that is not in the database. That information is not in the database. That card's not in the database. And um, so that's an error. And the reason I put that check column in is just to make sure that when I entered a card, I didn't misspell a name. I didn't get the, the position or the, anything wrong with the card. And that just verifies that the card I've put in is in the database. That's all that uh, H column, match column is for. All right, so now um, I have some other columns here. So this is uh, J through N are my parallel five players. Now this is a formula that automatically will pull from A through H. It pulls the data from A through H and it will add it in. So Let's say, for example, Adley Rutschman. He's a PXP 1 right now. If I had changed that to 5, you can see it added him in right here at the top. Adley Rutschman. Right? If I change him to a 4, you can see it takes him out of the 5, but it added him into the 4 over here. Right there. And... So, and not only that, but when you look at catchers, let's change it back to a five. Watch this. See my P5 catchers right here? Right now I have Ivan Rodriguez. Change it, Adley Rushman back to a five. Boom. And you can see the unique identifier pops up, but nothing else does. So I can just copy and paste, and then 
Adley Rushman's at the top. Ivan Rodriguez is at the bottom, and it puts it in that order. Eventually, I'm going to change that so that uh, I don't have to copy and paste the data. It will just fill in automatically. Um, but uh, right now, let's put Adley Rushman back to a 1. And you can see this is error error codes. And I'm going to change that eventually so those don't show up as errors. But I want to keep that there. Anyway, so this is my P5 players that I have um, that I've done. And I could look at this real quickly and say, okay, if I want to field a team that's all just P5 players, this is, this is who I have, which makes it easy. Now, as far as the depth chart goes, let's take a look at what I've done for that. Now, I've looked at every position except for the pitchers. Um, and so this is catchers. Now, these are the top catchers, and it sorts them and pulls them by their category. So you can see contact left, power left, contact right, power right, vision, discipline, batting clutch, hitting to durability, bunting, drag bunting. Um, and then fielding, fielding durability, arm strength, whatever. All the stuff, all the stats that SDS gives us, um, it sorts it by that. So we can take a look and say, okay, who's my best contact left catcher? Well, it's Salvador Perez, the 97 Salvador Perez card. Uh, which is the best power left? It's the 87 Salvador Perez card. My best contact right is Travis Dunard. And so on, and I can look and see uh, for which categories my best, what my best uh, players are, or the best cards I have, for the category that I'm interested in. And I've done this for uh, all the posi all the infielding positions, all not infield, all the fielding positions. And you can see that I have that data here, and then I have what I call my depth chart. So these are the top players for. Um, what I call um, overall statistics uh, for um, offense. So I've taken a um, I've taken their stats and I've created an average, and that's what uh, it uh, sorts it by. So by average, my best catcher is 99 Ivan Rodriguez. I have him at a P5, so his levels are are higher than uh, if it's not P5. And you can see he's my fastest um, running also. Uh, he's the best fielding uh, catcher that we have. Uh, he's not a switch hitter. Adley Rushman is a switch hitter, but he's all the way down here. Uh, he's only right-handed, but you can see his contact and power numbers are pretty good. Now, Mike Piazza, who's a P2, uh, has better contact and better power numbers than Ivan Rodriguez does. But look at his speed is 47. And his fielding is 78. So he's not as good of a fielder and not a, a, a good in at running as Ivan Rodriguez. So it just depends on, on the give and take on what you want in your positions. Um, for example, let's look at first base, Albert Pujols. Now, he has the highest numbers for contact and power, and um, he's also the second best in fielding. Max Muncy is uh, a 96, Robert Pujols is an 89. But his speed is slow. He's, he's a 66, as opposed to Rod Carew, who's an 82. So with Rod Carew, I can get 125 contact, which is... Um, the same as Albert Pujols, but look at his, his power is 53 uh, on the left and 75 on the right. So again, it just depends on the statistics that you want to use uh, when you're playing. And so from this um, depth chart, uh, one more thing, let's look at the catchers. Now these catchers aren't by their, our pitchers. These pitchers aren't by their pitching ability, they're by their offense ability. And they're hitting and they're running. So as you can see, Otani, of course, is at the top because he's a two-way player. Um, and look at his speed as a 91, he's fast. And then when you get down to relief pitchers, you can see Matzik is number one for 
And again, this is for hitting, not for their pitching abilities. Um, I didn't uh, do this for their pitching abilities. And so when we get to the lineup now, I could say, okay, what lineup do I want to use? Okay, uh, right now I'm working on Nolan Ryan. I'm trying to get him to P5. So who do I want as a catcher? I can go down my list of who's in my depth chart, and I can pick the catcher I want to work on. So you can see my Piazza is a P2. But if I change it to Ivan Rodriguez, you can see these, not, these stats change here, and my batting or, order changes. Now the batting order I have here on the left, this is just numerical. You can change it as, as I want. I, I put it in and out. But you'll see my batting order change down here because the catcher I have in the eighth position. Let me put it back to Mike Piazza, and you can see Mike Piazza changes down here. And so I have this that I can put up on the screen. So when I'm batting, you initially don't see their, their power and their contact. And their contact and power that I have here is an average of their left and right. So it just depends on the, on the uh, pitcher that they're going against. Now, I've put down here a column here for uh, the opposing pitcher, the pitcher that they're facing, if it's a, a left or a righty. And my intent is to eventually change this formula so that it will pull either their left or their right contact, depending on the pitcher that they're facing, instead of just an average of the two. Just because that's what, uh, that would be more helpful. But anyway, regardless, I can have this on the screen because when you have a player up to bat, you don't initially see uh, what their power and their contact is until after um, they've taken a swing. And this will give me a, a good idea of what their contact and power is ahead of time uh, and what their speed is on the base path. So that's the depth chart. Um, and you can see I have these other tabs. These are just sorting tabs that help um, put everything in place. So as you can see, I have, let's look at uh, the catcher. So I don't have any other catchers, but I have a couple first basemen here that uh, aren't in. So I will copy and paste, and I will, I will copy across. And this is just the maintenance for this spreadsheet. As you, as you uh, increase your players and and your inventory, this will increase also, and then I'll paste, and you can see it automatically puts those numbers in there for me. And then I'll go to second base. Well, let's go back to first base. I want to make sure my cursor is here, because I want to make sure I have uh, that formula sitting there so I know if uh, it needs to be expanded. So second base, I have someone new. We'll do the same thing, copy, paste. Now the card at the bottom isn't necessarily the new card. The new card could have been inserted into, into the middle somewhere. It just depends on where it falls in the statistics. And then I have my spreadsheet there, or my formula there. Third base, I lost a couple third basemen. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's delete those, and we'll come back and we'll delete this. I must have sold them, which is fine. Okay, let's look at shortstop. Okay, I don't have any new shortstops. Left field, nothing. Center, I sold a center fielder. Okay, let's go ahead and delete this line of data. Okay, right field, nothing new. Okay, I have a new starting pitcher that's not uh, in here, so let's copy and paste. Okay, and let's make sure I have a formula sitting there waiting, I do. 
relief pitchers I've sold. Oh wait, I want to keep that formula there. Okay, and closing pitchers. I sold the closing pitcher too. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and delete them out of here. It just keeps it clean, that's all it does. Keeps my sorters clean. And uh, they just, those are just help tabs to make sure I have uh, everything lined up the way I want it here. Okay, so that's basically the lineup and depth chart spreadsheet. Um, most of the time when I'm playing a game, I keep it here on the PXP tab so that I can add any players or change any P, uh, parallel statuses that I have uh, during the game that I'm playing. Now let's go ahead and save this. And we'll move it out of the way. Um, let's, let's bring up the PowerShell. PowerShell we're, we're done with, so I can close the PowerShell. Or I can just type exit. Or... Yeah, exit. I thought I had it wrong there for a second. Um, I'm done with the, the script. Don't need the script anymore. And okay. So let's look at the next spreadsheet that I use. It's called Inning Tracker. Let me close this. Save it. And let's pull up Inning Tracker. So right now I have this on the 11th inning because that's what I'm doing. Um, but I have a dashboard here that I was using for everything before. I would just change it as the innings went along. And the reason I didn't do this with the 11th inning because the 11th inning is completely different than all the others. It, no, it doesn't end for, what, 10 years or whatever. And you have to get to 2 million uh, XP to finish it. But as you can see, what I've done here is um, for a typical inning, it's 650,000 XP. And I type in, this is just hand typed in, the reward path and the points the point levels for the reward path. So as I'm playing a game, I know where I'm at. So say for example, I play a game and I get 1700 XP for the game. I will put that in there and then that will tell me that I have 593,931 and my next, my next step is gonna be 620,000. Uh, let's bring this down so I have a good, let's go back, let's go to 500,000. Okay, so now you can see how it works. So, 500,000. So now this is telling me I have 501,700 uh, XP. My next step is 530,000, and I have my amount to next step, I need to get 28,300 XP to get to my next step. Um, for my missions, I could put in, if I do a mission, uh, if I do moment, if I do an exchange, and like if I'm doing conquest and I get XP points for doing a conquest, I can do that here. So that adds everything up and it lets me know now. See, it says I'm at 504,000. Now, my next game I play, say I get um, 3,000 for the game. So that's going to tell me I have 4,700 um, 4, XP. So now I can go over here and change this to 4,700, take out the 3,000, and it updates. So um, this is just helps me so I don't have to keep going back to the inning page to find out, okay, what's, my, what's the next thing I'm going to earn? What's the next level? And, and whatever. I have it all right here, and I can have this up while I'm playing. I even added in a little narrative here that 
um, tells me how I'm doing and what I need to do by day. So I know minimum number of XP I need to get per day. So if we look at the 11th inning right now, uh, we can see that um, I have 1 million, uh, 1.6 million XP to earn in 3,260 days. Um, and I'm way above the average of what it would be over 10 years. I'm not going to take 10 years to play it, but um, it, it tells you uh, how much XP you need. And you can see right now I'm at 319,000, just over. My next step is 330,000 where I get a second inning boss. And uh, you can see on the left in column C, it shows you I was at, my last step was 310,000. I got the kitchen sink one choice pack. So this is my, my basic inning tracker that just keeps me uh, up to date. Now, I also have in here the teams. Now, when you play, when you go to a team, when you're playing the CPU, you can see it has their, o, their overall, their basic team stats. And I initially would put this in here so I could look and say, okay, what, how uh, competitive of a team do I want to play for any given certain situation against the CPU. And um, this, these are the teams and what their uh, stats are. Now those stats change uh, throughout the year whenever they do a roster update, those stats will change. So you have, you have to keep that up to date. And then I have column H where I have uh, played. So I can keep track, so I don't, I don't play the same team a lot every time. Um, I don't use this tab a lot, but I have used it uh, a little bit here and there. Now, PXP. This is another um, uh, tab that I've used so that I don't have to keep guessing where I'm at. Um, when you finish a game, you have a progress. And you have a, I think it's a, a parallel tab you can look at. And it will tell you where the players are that you used, how much PXP they earned during that game or whatever. And I have this here to help me when, when I'm working on a player, I can keep track. I don't have to keep going back to the card to see where they're at. And I know um, how far it's going to go. Um, I have a collections and this, I have this tab for when I was doing my collections. So I knew how many cards I needed from each category to get that collection done. Um, and that was very helpful. So, <coughs> excuse me, I knew where to go uh, to get cards or what cards I needed to get a certain collection that I wanted. Um, it came up for bosses. Uh, who was the boss for what innings? And as you can see, there are no bosses for the 11th inning. Um, and so I... Um, Keep, kept track of the bosses for each inning and which ones I'd own. And during the course of the year, I ended up getting more bosses uh, that I would either buy or somehow come across. And then you have the daily moments. Um, and I didn't start doing this until October because I wanted to see um, if there were any trends in the daily moments on what on how they what they gave you in the path rewards um, what if there was their goals or the the tasks that they gave you if there was any um, uh, similarities or trends for that it was I did this just mostly out of curiosity uh, just to keep track of it and then I just have a helper and that's for the um, the dashboard and you can see the 11th inning I've put in and before like I said I was just changing the dashboard for each inning what I'm gonna do um, for 22 is I will have a tab for each inning so I can compare to see uh, if there's any similarities so that's my inning tracker that I use those are the two uh, spreadsheets that I use the most uh, when playing MLB the show uh, and I find them helpful so that I don't have to keep going back and forth I can stay in the mode if I'm in a conquest I can stay in the conquest and just keep playing and I know where I'm at I know what I'm gonna get I know you know how what I have to do to, to get what I want to get um, and that's that 
I do have other uh, spreadsheets, uh, uh, quite a few number of spreadsheets that I have. Uh, evolution programs that I've done, uh, monthly awards that I've done, player programs, and I can go into those, and also team affinity that I've done, uh, spreadsheets that I've done to keep track of those as well. And if there's interest, if anyone shows interest, I can go into those and do a, a stream on that as well to see. But as far as that goes, um, when I stream and I'm playing, sometimes I'll say, oh, hey, let me put this into the database. But I never had any reference to let um, my viewers know uh, what I was actually doing. So now you know the spreadsheets that I'm using uh, that I created. And that's uh, basically what I'm going to go on now. Now I'm going to fire up the show and um, take a look at what I need to do today. I think I have a conquest map I want to take on. I haven't finished the team affinity ones and I think I have central uh, team affinity central 2. I think it's the next one uh, for me to do and that I will I will tackle. So I'm going to stop this stream uh, get on uh, my PlayStation and start that up and I'll start a stream when uh, I start playing. So I hope you found this informative and you enjoyed it. <laughs>